just two weeks ago. We're talking to Congressman Dennis Cardoza about the economy in his region, a lot of it uh, attached to the housing crisis. I want to show you a, a Los Angeles Times chart they had this week that gives a graphic picture of the housing market. The states that are in red, Nevada, Arizona, and Florida, are states with 46 to 60 percent of their homes that have negative equity in the second quarter of 2011. Those with the darker brown color in those states, 31 to 45 percent of the houses in those states have negative equity. And uh, the lighter tan is uh, 16 to 30 uh, percent. So it basically is almost every every state in the United States 16 percent or higher That's right. what will it take uh, for homeowners with negative equity I mean is this a long-term thing they are or were the housing prices ever to rebound to the level that they've seen them? well what we've seen is um, there are 22 million Americans who are living with relatives they can't afford their own place um, one of my colleagues joked the other day that this is nightmare on Elm Street where families are coming back together and having to move in together just to survive. Um, the, the reality is that those folks, many of them, want to own their own home. They need a job to do that. Uh, we're going to have to increase employment and get the economy moving in order to, to make that happen. Uh, in California, you have a situation where along the coast, the economy is relatively healthy. You have a higher level of income, and that's what brings our number down. But in my area, you have communities with up to 70 percent uh, for uh, people are underwater. Nearly 30 percent of um, uh, my folks in some communities have lost their home. In the Great Depression, only 27 percent of folks lost their home. So we, in some communities, have had a situation worse than the average of the Great Depression uh, with regard to home foreclosures. And will the, the numbers ever recover? Well, I think they will. I, I'm hopeful. This is America. We, we have always had our downturns and we have always come back robustly. Uh, I believe in our economic system. I believe in uh, our ingenuity and our, our capabilities. And I believe that America will come back. Next call for the congressman is from St. Petersburg, Florida. Aaron is an independent there. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning. Aaron. Good morning to you both. Um, Representative Cordoza, my question is uh, pretty simple, being that you were involved in the uh, bailout process for a lot of these toxic mortgage debt. Um, my question is why, why was the decision not simply to bail out the homeowners directly and accomplish the exact same thing instead of throwing millions of people out of their homes? Um, I, I would hope with, when you're answering this question you could bypass the, the argument of moral hazard. That seems like a very weak argument as uh, you're basically rewarding predatory lending instead of using taxpayer money to bail out well, taxpayers, thank you. Well, thank you for the question, and I totally agree with you. I w um, when the TARP discussion was coming forward, I was in the House leadership, and that was I was at ground zero. My district was one of those that was most heavily affected, so I had the most experience with what I thought would work to fix it. Uh, I put on the table, and in fact, Senate Republicans, for a period of time early in that discussion, put on the table uh, the, the equivalent of my home act that would allow everybody to be refinanced, fix the banks through fixing the actual cancer, the problem that was causing the, the illness throughout the country. I still think that would have been the best way to do it. I put my bill on Mr. Bush's desk. I put it on Mr. Obama's desk. I could never get any traction. Ultimately, I think it was the banks who didn't want to do it that way. I explained earlier why I thought that they wanted to keep people locked into the higher interest rate loans. They didn't want them to refinance. Uh, I thought it was the better way to do it, um, but uh, uh, we, we went a different direction. Now, uh, a lot of people criticize TARP. I, I understand why, but the reality is that the vast majority of those TARP monies have been paid back, and uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I voted against the second tranche of TARP because I didn't believe that we were doing enough for homeowners. Uh, it wasn't that, the, that I thought the program was a failure. I just didn't think we were doing it the right way for the right people. So I understand your question, and, and frankly, I agree with you. Joe, a, a regular member of the Twitter community, is more pessimistic than you. He tweets, I think the housing and real estate market has changed for this entire generation and more. We have about uh, 12 minutes left with Congressman Cardoza. Next call for him is Townsend, Massachusetts. Michael's a Republican there. Good morning, Michael. You're on the air. 
Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, C-SPAN. Thank morning, you for your Michael. coverage. Um, for the past couple of years, I've been assisting homeowners navigate through the MHA HAMP mm-hmm. program. Uh, it's my belief that the program was designed correctly. However, the implementation has been horrendous. Um, having said that, if a bank is going to lose approximately 40% of the loan amount if they go through foreclosure, why then wouldn't the government um, have every Fannie, Freddie, VA, and FHA loan written down by 25% and then just fix the interest rate at 4% across the board? Don't even underwrite it, just one fell swoop right across the board. If someone had a loan of $250,000 at 6% interest, their payment would be $1,498. If they reduced that principal by 25%, the loan amount would be $187,500, and the payment would be $625 per month. The banks would cut their losses from 40% to 25%. You're not going to be able to save everyone but at least you will be able to establish a floor in the housing market. And I agree 100% with you insofar as the housing has to come back in order to have a recovery. And I'll take my answer off the air. Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself. How were you helping these homeowners? Who were you working for? Uh, I started out simply by assisting friends go through the uh, application process and then just by word of mouth, uh, it just <laughs> exploded. And I am very happy that the, um, the government came down on the banks. I think it was sometime around February of this year. In that, as I said in the beginning, I believe that the programs are designed quite well. The implementation has been horrendous. And, you know, when you think about it, You can originate a loan in about 30 days. Now, I've had homeowners go through the merry-go-round with the banks insofar as the HAMP program for over a year. Yeah, Michael, if I could could just interrupt, I I think you're absolutely right in many respects. Uh, The difference between your area in Massachusetts and my area in California is my folks are 50 60 percent underwater the banks have been much less willing to cooperate in my area so while the Hampton programs and others were effective in areas like yours where you're 10 15 20 percent underwater in my congressional districts it's just been devastating and we get almost none worked out yet it takes like you say a year 18 months before they actually get resolution by the time that comes along, they're so far behind in their payments and the rest that there's no way for them to work out. Uh, with re- the, the current program that's in place, there's been 800,000 workouts by Freddie and Fannie. Only 40,000 of those have taken place over a 105% loan-to-value ratio. Anybody that is way underwater has been going through the program, has given the you know the double shuffle here and they lose their papers they um, come up with a thousand reasons not to um, rework them and these folks are just falling into foreclosure and that's what's happening in the places like Florida Nevada the Central Valley of California that I represent uh, and that's what's so devastating and so unfair I believe Jacksonville North Carolina Arlene Democrat Hello, Dennis. are you on the air Arlene hello Dennis let me turn this down um, the question uh, or comment I have, you said I was going to uh, apply it to like bleeding or wound bleeding, but you said cancer. If you look at the cancer as adjustable rate mortgages, why didn't Obama, the Pinocchio, actually focus on those? I'm sorry, I'm on a medication that makes me stutter. Why didn't he focus or the Congress focus on getting the adjustable rate mortgages to a fixed rate mortgage so that these humongous amounts of housing uh, that's out there that people are threatened by losing their homes because